Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. You catch up with us into the first fish of the session and in today's session hopefully what we're going to be showing you is how to target a few of those bigger fish, let's we say they're match winning fish that you're looking forward to catch in the last couple of hours. Now I'm probably only going to be fishing a couple of hours myself so it's going to be a real good indication of what sort of things you're expecting to do but basically what I'm doing is I'm fishing meat and like I said, I've just adjusted it very slightly to try and get and target those bigger fish. That's what we're fishing for, short period of time, high action, and hopefully putting like a, quite a nice weight of fish into your net like you would be doing in the last sort of hour, hour or two of the match. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this fish in now. He's not particularly the biggest fish in the world. I know I just said we're targeting big fish. He's probably four pound, but hopefully we'll be getting some bigger than that in the next few chucks but certainly this way what I've been doing and this little tweak I've done to my hook bait has for me personally been catching and picking out those bigger fish so that's what we're sharing with you today he's just hit the net so we'll have a little look at him and then we'll talk to you a bit more about the rigs and the baits and whatnot so let's just quickly whip this hook out nicely hooked on the top lip still full of life but there we are like I said, hopefully we're getting a bit bigger than that, but that's a cracking start. And he's the first one. We've only been fishing five or ten minutes, and we've started started strong. So let's pop him in the net, and we'll talk to you a bit about the rigs. There we are. He's back in the net. A successful start, but we're certainly looking for one, two, or even three times bigger than that. Hopefully, within the next few chucks. So there's a good time now. We've got the first fifteen just to have a quick look at the rig we're using. So let's pick the hook on there and we'll start from the top. So first of all, like I said, targeting big fish, you need to be geared up for it. So at the moment, or today, we're fishing tight over to an island and we have put some bait in down the edge as well. So it's shallow water fishing. Big fish in shallow water is a lot of time the problem of losing fish because they dart away, you have to be ready for it. So we've got double 10 for the elastic. I like double 10, it really does do well for me. If I was gonna recommend anything else, I would probably say red hydro. But Red Hydro is quite expensive, you start putting it through a few kits. So for me, Double 10 does what I need it to do. The rig line is 019, which is Guru Engage. I've switched all my line over to that. It's really high abrasion resistance. And if it just doesn't snap, you can trace it through some leaves and some reeds. As long as you don't get in a real mess, you should be getting most fish out with that. Float choice is a Dura, Dura 10, 4x14, nice and heavy takes quite a nice little bulk with a couple of droppers of number eight, which I've just got down here. Slid up the line a little bit with that fish. But that's just fish with a bulk and two droppers and sort of, I don't know, six, eight inch hook link, probably six inch hook link onto a Guru MWG size 14 hook onto a bait band. So that's the rig, nothing particularly complicated, but it's really beefed up for it. One thing that might be worth mentioning, the distance between the float and my elastic there, as you can see, is probably longer than you'd expect to use normally i'd like to get it nice and tight hit every bite but because we're fishing it in shallow water i want to get that pole tip quite high I don't want to be spooking them so i'd rather miss an extra bite or two because i've got a distance before i connect with it than i would just put my pole right over the heads and not get that bite at all so it's a bit of a compromise and work out yourself what's working if they're really having it shorn it down and then hit the bite straight away but just to start with i'm going to have that long distance between the, the float and the pole to see what happens on there. So that's the rig, then we come on to the baits. Baits on feeding, really simple, nice and cheap, and great for big fish fishing. So start off just pellet, it's just what I had in the bags. Actually, these are green swim stim. I think I fished a match where you had to use those, so that's the only reason I've gone for those, but any pellet works whatsoever. A couple of tins of cat meat in there, just one's in jelly, one's in gravy. Again, just what I had in my bag, but any sort of cat meat works. Meat is a real big fish bait in my opinion. It catches a lot of fish, quick, instant attraction, and that's what you're looking for, especially in short sessions, or like I said, those last couple of hours. But this is what I've been playing with. I've, I've already prepared these earlier, and as you can see, these are bright bits of meat. Now all I've done is at home, I've just cut them into probably centimeter, even slightly bigger, some of them, some big cubes. And then on top of that, what I've added is I've added some king crab goo from quarter really high attraction in smell and in color and on top of that what i've added is some krill shaker so basically i've come up with in my opinion 
messing around with a few things. I use a lot of these short sessions to mess around. There's three things that make a difference when you're trying to catch quicker than anything else, and especially big fish. So one of those is size. I like big baits. So you've got big bits of meat, double corn, two dendrobinas, something like that. Big, stand out in your face, first thing they get to. So big size baits is the first thing. The next thing is visual. I like colours, messing around. Like I said, today we've got big pink bits of meat, but colours for me is a real plus. I mean, if I was to, to put that out there without any of this on, yes, I'm going to get that bite. But if I get that bite a minute, two minutes earlier, then that's all the better for me. And then the second thing is smell. I want something that stinks. It doesn't have to smell horrible. I actually, this, this crab stuff, I actually really like the smell of and the krill shaker. So to me, it actually smells good. So the fish, it must smell good too. So they're the three things. Now with the big colored meat, I think I get all three. So I've got the size in the big cubes, the color in the high-vis pink from the goo, and then the krill shaker and the meat in general, and even the flavor, and it all smells really nice as well. So either pick one of those things, or if you can use all three together like i said two dendrobinas fishing over ground bait works really well because you've got that massive size bait in amongst ground bait which is not really anything to eat so it's just something to think about when you're fishing shallow water trying to put a big weight together fast and target those bigger fish is try and make your hook bait be the first thing they pick up and if you can get that sorted you're in for a real day's fishing so let's stop talking about that now what i'm going to do is I'm gonna go straight back over that spot. We've already potted in three, probably half sort of size pots. I'm fishing 60 meters, cat meat's quite heavy. I'd like to put in two big pots, but just to the weight, if you're cupping in, I've had to put three half size pots in. So quite a big chunk of bait to start with, and we've just had that fish. So I'm gonna go out there now quickly without topping it up. And then what I'll do is we'll probably top it up next fish and keep that bait going in. Big chunk of meat goes onto a bait needle, stretch that bait needle, meat goes over and then just let that go so what happens when you let it go the bait band expands back into the meat and it sits there and hangs with your hook just hanging proud so that's the first thing let's see just caught my finger straight away it's the first thing that makes contact with the lip is your hook rather than striking through the meat so that's another nice little way of hooking it so what we do is we're going to go straight back onto that spot and hopefully this time he's going to be slightly bigger so let's get back out there Right, so I'm just going to lower in the meat now. Just keep everything nice and steady. Like I said, fishing at this distance, you want to keep it all nice and smooth. And just lower it in so that float settles. And then it's just a case of keeping an eye on it. Because I'm expecting to see some sort of indication of a bite. Within sort of a minute or so, I'd hope to see something happen. And there we go. Well, there we are. Hopefully you got a good perception on how quick that was and that's what I was saying about you need to try and make your hook bait the most appealing thing in the peg there's probably loads of cat meat and loads of pellets still sitting there but that bite was pretty instant I mean it was a few seconds I would say now I mean obviously please don't get me wrong we're fishing a really good time we're fishing in the evening and there's not well there's a couple of people fishing around the other side of the lake but there's not a tremendous amount of pressure on it but Believe me, it has been working as well in really, really competitive conditions. And it's just, like I said, making the most out of getting this bite as quick as you can. As early as you can possibly get that bite is what you want to be doing. And we're into another okay sized fish. Again, still not the monster that you're hunting, but if you're putting quick bites in, you're putting good weight together. And don't get me wrong, I've mentioned many times already that you are hunting these bigger fish, but at the end of the day, especially carp, they're greedy. And a three or four pound carp, even the, these size meat chews I'm using are probably over a centimetre, they'll still grab one. And uh, especially with that goo on and that flavouring on, it just seems to be so attractive that no matter what it is, we'll have a go at it. Believe it or not, I've had, I don't think I've ever got it in the mouth, but I've had skimmers and bream have a go at it. But in general, you pick out a nice size of fish. You don't, you ne you're never gonna get a roach and bits and pieces like that. So you just eliminate that wasted time. If you are fishing for big fish, you eliminate that sort of nuisance fish issue. But again, we, a lively, 
little mirror has come and probably less than a couple of minutes after we just put that first one in the net. So cracking start and we'll get him back with the others and see if we can have another one. hooked another fish and this is one of them situations where you really have to trust your gear it's bolted off around there and at the moment I just can't do anything with it so I'm pretty confident in the pole nice and strong the rig strong the QM1 hooks just don't really seem to go out I don't want to tempt fate but it's almost just a case now of I'm gonna to have to hold him here until he decides to come back round. I don't want to pull his head off slightly hairy moment when he bottled off around there but that's what I was saying about this shallow water you need you need to be geared up for it because they don't have to be huge fish that that get the better of you either it's those sort of turbocharged ones that shoot off in shallow water around a corner try and find a little tree or root or some lilies to get you in they know all the tricks so it's just a case of being ready for it geared up for it and hopefully you'll start landing them. Like I said, this one tore right off into that gap and it's just, I've just held him, kept confidence in the gear and he's come back. So we're now on to top gear. Hopefully we'll see how big he is shortly. There we are. Well, that's more like it. That's what I was saying about the match winning fish, the sort of big fish you're hoping to catch on this method. Just going to get the top kit out of the way. And we'll see if we can hold them up for you. These are the, the stamp of fish that I'd more be wanting to catch on this particular method. This dorsal just hooked in this net, so just quickly whip that off. There we are. And if he behaves himself. That's much better, that's more what we're looking for. Big, thick, across the shoulder commercial carp. A nice common, that's probably why you fought that little bit harder, but that's what I was saying. Take your time and get geared up. I'm not saying go and use 15, 20 pound line to pole, because you're asking for disaster, but don't also go the other way. Just be confident and sort of step up to it, but certainly don't go and start smashing thousands of pounds worth of gear up just be a bit sensible and you can get fish in quick and big fish i mean that's a proper weight builder a last fish last couple of hours get in that shallow water and they can be rewards so let's get him slipped back i'm sure there's more out there for me just pop him in a net and we'll get some more bait perhaps fed in the swim So he's gone back in the net. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cup in back in the swim. If I just grab my, my potting kit, because basically I've had I've had a couple of fish off that spot now, and that last fish, although it was a bigger fish, it took not long, but it took three or four minutes probably for that bite. And I think what it is, the first fish I caught really quick. There's a load of food there, and then they do disappear. And this isn't the sort of method. You, you want to be shy on. I mean, if I thought these fish were in any way, shape or form finicky, I certainly wouldn't be using almost glow-in-the-dark two mil cubes of, of luncheon meat. So you have to sort of fish to how you expect to catch fish. And I'm fishing for quick bites here. And like I said, bait-wise, you have to bait accordingly to that. So I'm probably now going to feed every fish and as you I probably just hopefully you can see is I've dropped that in from a big height that bait and making a real big splash with it so when that hits the water it's making a real big noise I'm almost sort of ringing that dinner bell ready for another fish to be coming into the area and then hopefully find them a hook bait so well we've just cut that in I'm hoping it's going to be relatively instant as a 
speed up in the bike process so hopefully by the time i'm out there there's fish heard that and they're starting to come back into the area so another big bit of meat goes on and like i said getting it on this band is one of the best changes i've done for all my fishing just pull it straight and let it go and it expands and that hook really does sit nicely and it's not only with meat i've started banding i mean pretty much now if i can band it i will i band the corn the pellets so you can even band worms and casters if you sort of play about with it perhaps that's another video for another day but there's certainly better ways of hooking fish and i've hooked a lot more converted into fish into the net by putting baits onto a bait band because that hook is free straight into the mouth it's the first thing it makes contact with you haven't got a strike for any of the bait so that is one of my big tips when fishing anything nowadays especially with big baits is try and get your hook free either hair rigged or bait band in some description so you're straight in contact with the fish so out we go again and hopefully we won't be too long before we connect with another one There's another fish just coming in now. We've had a real good sort of hour and a half, two hours at it with filming time. We've probably fished for an hour and a half, I would say. And we've, we've kept a little run of fish coming together. We're probably gonna call this one the last one. Like I said, we're only fishing a few hours after work, but real high impact fishing, trying to, trying to show you things to do when you haven't got much time or when you need to catch really quick and certainly today the fish have been quite nice they've played ball for once it doesn't always go that well when you bring the camera right but there's been some bigger fish we've had uh, a couple of smaller fish at the start but that that is expected they're not all going to be massive but certainly for match style fish should we say like pole fish they they have been relatively big fish that we've caught and that's what it's all about sort of making that hook bait the most appealing thing in your peg and you should be catching pretty well if the fish are there like I said the fish have got to be there it's, there is no miracle in fishing you can't how good your rig is how good your bait is you can't make fish eat it that aren't there so keep persevering with it and hopefully it'll do well for you so hopefully if I get this fish in we'll show you this one and we'll pop them in the net and then that'll be the end of today's session. The light slowly starting to fade. Fortunately I work quite long hours. I don't finish till about six. The time we get fishing it's probably seven o'clock by the time we really start actually putting any baits in the water. I'd like to uh like to think they'd let me have half a day, but I'm not I'm not so lucky with that. Now coming towards the end. what an absolute stunner of a fish we've definitely saved the best to last let me see if I can get that it's a common but with a real nice orange tone to him he's definitely got some koi in him and uh, I don't know you but there's not many more commercial fish that are better looking than that I hope the camera picks it up because he has got a real orange glow to him. Any sort of cross of a koi, they always have them better colours, real nice fish. And again, a crack in size. So we've had two earlier that weren't so big. And then from there, it's probably been between sort of eight and 12 pound, probably every fish bar that. So cracking sport, big weight builders. Like I said, the match winning fish really is a cracking way to build a weight up but I won't keep him out too long he's kicking a bit so I'll pop him in the net and then we'll have a look at what we've got well let's get these fish back so it's been a cracking session and as I did mention earlier it's not just meat that it works with it also works with corn 
two worms and that, like I said, it's the three important things. Colour, smell and size. In shallow water, big fish, they're the things you're after. But let's get these fish back safely for another day. There we are. Nice fish in there. Last one goes away. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you again on the next one.